Welcome to the second section about HTTP endpoints. In this section, we're going to take a look at how to implement JAX-RS resources and how we can marshal our output using JSON. Then we're going to see how we can send custom HTTP information and validate the communication. And finally, how we can handle potential exceptions that arrive. And now in the first video, JAX-RS resources, we're going to see how we can access our business logic using HTTP and how we can write JAX-RS resources. We're going to see how we can bootstrap the JAX-RS resource um, process and how we can run and connect our Java EE applications via HTTP. And then also we're going to see how we can access our business logic. So now we have the car manufacturer bean that we used to manufacture new cars. And also we now enhanced it to retrieve some new cars that are now in fact just dummy objects. And now we can want to access our business logic by HTTP here. In order to do so, we will have to create a new well, class, first of all, to bootstrap the JAXRS process that we can call, for example, JAXRS configuration. And this class now has to do two things. First of all, it needs to extend the application type that comes from JAXRS. And then second, we have to annotate with application path, where we can provide a path, for example, resources. That means that the URL, part of it slash resources, will now be our JAXRS application. What this does internally, it will register a new servlet that has the JAXRS application already there. And now we can just simply write new JAXRS resources, for example, a resource to access our cars that we will include in the boundary package and call cars resource. And this class should be a JAXRS root resource. In order to declare it as such, we annotate it with add path. And the path annotation provides also a part of the URL, in our case cars, that means slash cars accesses this resource. And now in this resource, we can define resource methods. For example, a method to retrieve us cars. And we can specify this method using Java return types, for example, list of cars to retrieve the cars. And in order that the method will be accessed by HTTP, we specify the annotation at get, such as other annotations, for example, post, put, delete, and so on and so forth, to tell JAXRS every time we access the URL cars with an HTTP get call, then this method will be called. And now this method internally can use well, everything we have in Java EE. For example, we can inject our car manufacturer bean that will be used to well, retrieve and return that information retrieve cars and now everything that will be returned here we can just simply return in our JAXRS application and return the list of cars in this case and now we can also specify in which content type we want to send that information using the add produces annotation that comes with JAXRS and therefore we can specify a content type where we can have the class media type from JAXRS such as application JSON. Now that means that everything that will be returned here in any method of that class will be returned as application JSON. And now that's already sufficient to access our business logic and to test it. In order to run our application, we will call a script that builds our WAR file using Maven into the cars.war and deploys that using a Glassfish 5 server. That is a Java EE8 um, application server. And now we can use any REST client of our choice, for example, for curl on the command line to access this via HTTP. This will be available on the local host port 8080, the cars application, because it's called cars.war and the um, application is auto deployed, the resources application path, and finally our cars root resource. And once we access this, we're going to see that our server sends HTTP 200 OK with the list of cars serialized as application JSON. And now, once we pretty print that, we see that the three cars have been sent. So that means we can already output that information via HTTP, emit as content type application JSON. And now, if we also want to call our manufacturer car business method, 
That means in HTTP, we want to post some new information to our cars resources. We want to post a new car. We can write another method that we annotate via add post. For example, where we can create a new car. And that car is specified via the car specification. Since we have our car manufacturer being that will manufacture a new car based on that specification. And now this method parameter means that this comes from the HTTP request body that is sent by the client and that is also provided as some content type, in our case, application JSON as well. Therefore, we use the add consumes annotation to also consume application JSON. And again, this can be annotated on the method or on the class level and can be used to provide that information. Now we want to redeploy everything here, redeploy and rebuild our application. And now we specify a different HTTP method here, post to post to that resource. That means, well, we specify first of all the content type application JSON here, because we send some information now from the client as request body. That means we will specify a car with an engine type such as diesel engine and a color such as red to send that information to the server. And then this returns with 204 no content. This is because we specify this method as void. It does not return anything. And now the lock will tell us that we persisted a new car with a red color and a diesel engine type. And now this is how we can access our business logic via HTTP using JAXRS.